let's check out the output tab. The output tab is basically where you're going to set what your file name is called. So we've got this um, common file prefix. This is really what the file name is going to be if you are rendering out a sequence. So here, by default, what um, what Houdini uh, puts in for this field is a dollar sign hip. That basically means we're going to put a dollar sign hip is a token that says wherever our current uh, project file is. And that, that's that's what that like string substitution evaluates to. So it says, wherever our current file path is, you're gonna create a folder called render. Then inside of that render, you're gonna create this image sequence. And the image sequence is gonna go like this. The first token is hip name. It's gonna name the image sequence based off of the name of the file. So in our case, that would be elements of Houdini V05 end is gonna be the first part of the file name. Then it's gonna be dot dollar sign OS. Dollar sign OS is a token for the render nodes name that we're using. So dollar sign OS is this string right here, redshift rop one. And then dollar sign F4 means that it's gonna be rendering out an image sequence uh, and so each frame is going to be named accordingly, but with a padding of four. So frame one will be point will be zero 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 one and then zero 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 two frame 120 is going to be zero one two zero etc and then the file path extension right here so that's kind of a lot to think about right now but essentially it's um it's just kind of it, it kind of ensures that there's going to be a unique output for every render setting that you have and for every version of a file that you're working on so you could also um select a custom location um if you want to change the default here you can actually just go and type out the path here if you want to or you can uh, hit this little page icon right here and that'll allow you to select a custom location for your file uh, what i do in the first place though is actually copy this string in case you want to use these tokens um, so i just select that from every from dollar hip name to the end and hit control C just to uh, copy that out and then hit the uh, page icon and here you can see that you have a nice little browser you can kind of uh, find where you want to uh, render this thing out so by default we're in the render folder I'm just going to hit this up arrow to go up for our purposes let's just pretend we want to create a special render folder in our hip directory we just click the new folder button I'll just call this render 2 and hit accept and then down here we got to provide our file name and I, uh, I'm just going to control V to paste in the dollar sign hip nine dot dollar dot dollar sign OS dot dollar sign F4 dot DXR uh, file path in there and um, then hit accept and that will uh, kind of update this here. Now, if you uh, notice when you uh, middle mouse click on the parameter right here, it will expand this string and I'm just going to hit control B while my mouse is hovered over here to make this uh, parameter view bigger. But you can see that it will actually give you a preview of the expansion of how that string will evaluate. So you can see that it's going into the, my Dropbox folder all the way out to lesson recording files render to that folder we just created. And then this is what the name of the file is going to look like. Elements of Houdini v5 end dot redshift wrap one oh oh one dot exr and so you can kind of uh, get a little hint that there's this little tiny dotted line around this parameter uh, box um, that you can kind of see that's showing that it is evaluating that string that's not what it actually is typed in as dynamically we middle mouse click on that again and it returns to the tokenized version of that file path but we haven't effectively changed anything only just the way it looks so we can just double check things and see what uh, these are going to evaluate to before we end up actually rendering so that's just a cool thing to keep in mind. Um, I'm just going to hit control B to make that small again. And then I'm going to right click and say revert to defaults on this uh, parameter. So we're all back to uh, the base default of that. Whatever it is that you're changing in here, just be sure if you're rendering out a sequence to put dollar sign F in it. Otherwise you will re-render the, uh, you'll re-render your entire image sequence over the single file, the singular file, and just have one image of the last frame of your um, animation. So just make sure dollar sign F4 is in there somewhere and that it's surrounded by dots. That's the other thing. If you put, if you, if you don't put um, a dot between these tokens, they won't evaluate correctly. So hip name can be next to a slash, but it's got to be separated by a dot, you know, to get to, to have dollar sign OS and hip name evaluate correctly. So just make sure there's dots and that you at least have a dollar sign F4 in there or something and uh, you should be good to go. So you can also just uh, change what you want. So let's just, for example, um, render out a few frames of this and uh, see what we can get. Uh, going on with that. I'm going to just go and maybe change this to a JPEG. So I'm going to say .jpg at the end of this. And then let's actually change the file format to .jpg as well. 
And then just to make sure things go fast, I'm gonna go back to the main tab, override the camera resolution and set it to quarter res. And I'm just gonna hold down uh, control shift and click in these two parameters to remove their expressions. And let's just set our start and end to something small like 10, so for the first 10 frames of animation. And if I go back up here to the top and say render to disk, uh, we should get an M play pop up that will kind of just show our image sequence going off to disk. So we get this little uh, status indicator right here and an M play window pops up here and you can see it's starting to render off that image sequence. I'm just going to interrupt this because uh, we don't need to wait for it to go through its whole entire um, sequence of images. But now you can see that um, in the it is created in our hip folder. So this is our hip folder, um, dollar sign hip, like we were talking about over here on the output. Dollar sign hip is the location of the current file. So at the location of the current file, it creates a render folder, like so, render folder. And then if we dive in there, you can see that it has created, and let's just go and show this. Let's look, let's view this as details. It makes it a little bit easier to see. Um, you can see that it's created a file called elements of dnv 5 and dot redshift rop dot one dot jpeg. And you can see that it is writing those files out right now. Um, if I go back over here to mplay, you might notice that these images, uh, appear, this image that's rendering out in mplay may appear a little bit more blown out than what we're getting in our IPR right here. Um, but if we open up the image here, it looks like everything's okay. This matches up pretty good with our initial um, image right here. So uh, one of the things, one of the things that I like to set before I kick off a render to mplay is this one over here. I'm just gonna close mplay right now. We're gonna re-render a couple of these frames just to make sure that it works, but I'm gonna close this image preview. I'm gonna go down here in our output setting. I'm going to, in our output tab, I'm gonna scroll down to the mplay preview uh, uh, menu right here. And right here, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to just uh, set the mplay display gamma back to one. So now if I render this out, I go up to render to disk. You can see that it looks a little bit off at first, but once it's done rendering, it, it ends up snapping into looking the correct way. So I'm just gonna interrupt that real quick. And I'm gonna pull up, I'm gonna enlarge this and then kind of scrub through. You can see that this mplay uh, rendering now uh, kind of matches up with what we have in our IPR. And it's looking good like that. If you look at our images on disk, they are looking good too. Nice. We're just gonna close this. Uh, another render segment that I like to use is over here on the post effects uh, tab and under output. Um, I like to actually apply the color and LUT controls to the HDR files and mplay preview files. Just generally, I bake in all my stuff. That's just the way I like to do it. Um, if you are, if, you're, if that's not your thing, then whatever. But I just, I, I understand. I just, this is kind of the way I like to do it. I like to have everything kind of look consistent. So I just turn these on and like any of my bloom effects and stuff, they will appear in my mplay files uh, when I'm rendering to that uh, little uh, picture viewer that we were looking at uh, just a second ago.